Hello guys, welcome to Need for Travel channel. In this video we will have an interview with amazing people. They are French cyclists, David and Matilda. They were cycling all the way from France to China, 378 days. And they entered China in March 2020 during the coronavirus outbreak. Their story is amazing, they are cycling by tandem and now they're gonna tell us all their stories so it's gonna be exciting. So hello David, hello Matilda, tell about yourself please. Hello everybody, my name is David, I'm French, I'm uh, 30 years old. Uh, I was born in the middle of France, uh, the city name is uh, Clermont-Ferrand. I studied mechanical engineering, but the last job I did was I was managing a organic supermarket. That makes uh, more sense to me. Uh, yeah, and I'm happy. Hello, I'm uh, Mathilde, I'm 30 years old. Mm. I used to travel a lot during my study. I went to Canada, Netherlands, Cameroon, and then I came back to France to find a work. And I used to work in organic development uh, before I started my, tra my trip. So we get married uh, at the, uh, on the summer 2018 and uh, the 14th of October 2018. We just went on a big bicycle trip uh, for that. That is basically our honeymoon trip on this tandem bike right there. Your story is amazing. And was it your first trip by bicycle? And how did you come up with the idea to travel all the way by bicycle? First long distance trip, but not the first bicycle trip. Because when we, we were in France during our holidays, summer holidays, we liked to travel for two weeks in France. Of traveling, it was really nice to discover the countryside and we like also the uh, sportive effort. So we decided, yes, if we want to make a long trip, maybe bicycle should be something we will appreciate a lot. Before leaving, we were part of an associative workshop who helps people to repair their own bike by their own hands. And so we think that Biking uh, can really change the world and have very positive effects. Yeah, I totally agree with you. And why did you decide to choose tandem bike? It's very different from riding just your own bicycle. This tandem has a very big family story because it was my parents' tandem. When they got married, they also did a honeymoon trip on this tandem in Corsica. And they travel a lot with friends, always in France. Uh, but then they become older and older and they got a new tandem. So we were just thinking what this tandem will become. And we were afraid it will stay in the garage for so many years. And as we said, because we like also repair old bicycle, we, we say, okay, this is a good opportunity for us because it's really, um, a good quality frame. Yeah, from the late 50s, I think, we are not sure, but uh, quite heavy, but good quality steel, yeah. So we started our holidays, I will say it before, with this standard bike, and we like it, so we just decided to continue for a longer distance journey. Also, yes, this is important because uh, when you are on the tandem, the person in the back, me for example, uh, you really have to trust the person in front because you cannot control anything. So. As I, I trust him, it's okay. <laughs> I'm trustable, trust me. And uh, also what is nice, it's because he's a bit more sportive than me and also more uh, adventurer. Uh, as I'm in the back, uh, I just have to follow. And because I trust him, it works. So it's a nice way to travel for us. It works very well. But maybe not for everybody. Yeah, depends. You have to try. That's great that it works for you. I think uh, it will work for many people as well. And how did you plan your trip? Do you have a flexible plan or do you stick on one plan that you have planned before? So the, the ground uh, rule of our trip is quite easy. Um, we don't take any plane. We travel on a low budget, about 500 euro uh, per month. And um, we don't have any deadline. Like uh, we don't have to go back here or there or at home at this date. No, we just go without any endpoint for the moment. So um, we had for the beginning a very simple idea. Simple idea is just to visit friends who live abroad. 
and we have a friend who is living in Finland, but because we just left France at autumn, if you directly go to Finland, uh, this means you would be in winter there, and I think it's not really an enjoy enjoyable place. So we decided first we will go south, we, will, we would like to have a warm winter, so that's why we went to Morocco. And so just with this simple idea, I want to visit a friend, you can say this who is living here yeah, in Finland or elsewhere, if you just say it and just buy a plane ticket that would take you a week, a day, it's easy. But when you are you just um, do it on your bicycle, then it brings you into a real adventure because it, it takes months to go there. So for us, it's it's just this uh, this idea of this travel is having simple ideas, but following our rules make a big adventure. Yeah, so we travel for 10 months in Europe and Morocco. And then on the way, uh, when we... Uh, when we arrived in Finland, we have other friends who told us, hey guys, we are moving to Bangkok, living for one year there, maybe you can come to visit us. So on the bicycle, we were just thinking, is it possible or not, should we do this or not? And then when we arrived in Helsinki, we, we thought, okay, let's do it. So then started the trip from Europe to Asia. Yeah, because Helsinki and Finland is quite a key point. Because when you're in Helsinki, it's very close to the Russian border, about 400 kilometers. So that's why we were so close to this uh, access to Asia, because then in Russia it's quite well known. You can take the, the big Trans-Siberian train and then you arrive basically in Asia. So uh, Russia is really the bridge between Europe and Asia. So uh, yeah, we just took the decision, we worked hard and got the visa and we were good to go to, to Asia. So we first cycled to St. Petersburg, then went to uh, Veliky Novgorod, then took train to Moskva, Moscow, Moscow, and uh, then took another big train to Irkutsk. There we enjoyed the magnificent, really beautiful Baikal Lake and its surrounding. And then from Baikal Lake we just took another train who bring, brought us to the um, Russian and Chinese border that is actually very close to also to the Mongolian border, but we went directly to China. And from, from there, we cycled uh, in Inner Mongolia and then took a big train that uh, to reach Chengdu, more in the south, because it was quite uh, cold, because we were there in October 2019. So then uh, we reached Chengdu, took a bus to Dali, uh, another city in Yunnan, and then we crossed all Yunnan, Lao, and basically all the way to Bangkok to uh, reach our goal, who was to visit these friends who were living there. And that was a very nice reward. Yeah, and then uh, we didn't know yet how we will come back to Europe. So, but we were really interested by Central Asia. So we decided to took another way to go back to South Laos. Uh, yes, South Laos, North Vietnam, and into China again to be able to to arrive to Kazakhstan and Central Asia. But this is for later. Yeah, your road is so interesting and I'm sure you had many interesting stories on the way or maybe funny stories, I don't know. Could you share some of them? So we have, after all one and a half year of travel, of course, we have many, many funny stories, interesting stories uh, to share. Uh, we selected some of them. So for me, the first very nice story is uh, uh, we are both musicians. Uh, Mathilde play uh, flute. And as you can see, a flute is easy to, to carry, it's quite small, not heavy, so that could fit in our uh, uh, trailer. But uh, me, as I play drums, uh, I, w I was not able to carry all the drum set. I mean, I, I was reasonable, I just said, no, don't take the drum set, David. And also, um, just imagine a duo between a flute and a drum set, I think it's quite limited. So uh, I just went on the, on the road with only my uh, drumsticks, uh, that I never used basically but when we were still in France um, we arrived to um, Fijac and there we met a nice warm shower couple and uh, I told this story to the guy that I was looking for an instrument I didn't want to play guitar I, I don't know I don't really like the feeling of this instrument I was thinking maybe I, I just I just uh, told him maybe accordion would be nice and he just said yeah maybe interesting but on the next morning he said yeah, David I have a present uh, for you and just it gave me this accordion, this one, this really old fashioned vintage accordion. And actually this accordion has a very nice story because this guy found this accordion into a trash bin. 
uh, in Germany. And he found it, and when he found it, he just um, traveled with it all the way to Mali in Africa. So this, this instrument already went to Africa. And then he was, this guy said, I am so proud, I am so happy to give it to you, and please bring it as far as possible. So this instrument made all the way from France to uh, here, China, with us. So this instrument actually saw three different continents. And... Uh, and yeah, so that's why that was for me a really nice opportunity to start learning a new instrument and to carry more weight with a big smile. Yeah, so we have a, another interesting story. One day we were in Thailand and in the morning we left our temple because we used to sleep in temples. And we, we just cycled one kilometer, I think, and we saw a tree uh, in the electricity line, uh, like just a yeah, small uh, piece of tree. So we just, uh, what is this? We just took a picture and um, uh, four wheels, car, car just stop also when they saw us and it was white people so we say ah okay let's talk together and we we just discussed a few minutes and and the guy told us ah you are cycling from france like this it's amazing you should stop in my foundation pimali just uh, w one kilometer further and i will i will come back in few in maybe two hours and we will have something uh, to talk about you can discuss about your explain us your journey because it's amazing so we just say okay let's let's see you later and we arrived in this beautiful foundation it's like nice um nice building in the countryside and a uh, nice host hotel because it was um, a campus to teach a student from the countryside how to become how to work in the hotel in the bar in the restaurant and so we just uh, relaxed in this beautiful place have a coffee water whatever and then we the family came back and we discussed with them so they they they, they came from switzerland and they built this foundation a few years ago and they are really working on it and passionate with this program and uh yeah at when we were discussing during the the lunch um we figure out that they can help us because we had a problem with our back wheel, the hub in our back wheel from Lao. We couldn't climb any any roads anymore because we we couldn't uh, put pressure on the on the back wheel. Yeah, the gear hub was uh, somehow broken. Yeah, but it could it could turn. So from Lao, we we change our road to have only a flat uh, plane, flat. Yeah, flat area. Flat area to arrive in Bangkok. And so in Thailand, we met these guys and it was impossible for us to find this spare part in, in, in Laos, Asia. Thailand, in Southeast Asia. So we were thinking maybe we should buy from uh, Europe. And those guys just told us that their parents will come to Bangkok to visit them for Christmas, so two weeks later, and for sure they will be happy to help us. So we were just... Uh, so I don't know. Uh, very happy to to see that we will find uh, we will find in a solution for our problem, and so then we we start to to talk with the the Shimano Center in Switzerland, and they were willing to help us to send the parts to a, a shop in Switzerland, and the parents came to collect the parts, put in the suitcase, fly to Bangkok, and they gave us a, a appointment in the, their hotel. And so just before Christmas, we arrived in this hotel, very nice hotel in Bangkok, and they were there with in the suitcase our parts that we were looking for one month. And yeah, it was really amazing story because they, they help us a lot and and yeah just because at the beginning we stopped because of this tree in the electricity line to take take a picture and then we we got a, a new spare part so good advice uh, when you see something strange just stop take a photo you don't Some, know what happened yeah you don't know what happened <laughs> what a coincidence and i remember you arrived in china 
in March when everybody was scared of going to China and it seemed to be like a crazy to go there. How did people react on your decision to go to China and um, how, do, how did you feel about that? So basically, as we told you, we came from China because we had a double entry visa. Uh, so we entered once in, uh, it was in October 2019. So then we went to Bangkok, etc. Then uh, have Christmas there with our friend, New Year also, very good time. And then it was time to go out of Thailand and to go back. So we, we had, there is two choices, or you go to India, Myanmar, India, Pakistan, all this way, or you can also go back to China and uh, cross Central Asia. And because we had this double entry visa valid until 27th of February 2020, we chose this option. So we were uh, really happy to cross back Laos, then uh, the south of, of Laos is really amazing, very uh, wild. And then we arrive in, in Vietnam and then China. So when, when we just uh, left Bangkok, yeah, there were some rumors about this virus. And then we were coming closer and closer to China and people, we could see the news. People were um, more and more afraid and uh, warning us all the time. But basically, we had no other options. And because we don't want to fly, uh, we just keep, we just stick to the plan. And... Uh, that was actually a great choice. Many people in Vietnam just said, yeah, no, don't go to China. It's very dangerous. Our family was also afraid for us because they were watching the news. But the thing for us, we were lucky because we had a, a Chinese uh, friend. Uh, we actually, we met her in Morocco one year before, one year in 2018. 19, yeah. 19, at the beginning of the trip. Yeah, at the beginning of the trip, we met her in Morocco. She was also traveling by bicycle there. And so we had a direct contact inside the country. And she just told us, no, it's no problem, just come, uh, it's no big deal, the situation is under control. So we were afraid, but because we have this information, we just rely on her and we just enter the country. And that was quite funny, because at the border station, basically all Vietnamese people were not allowed to go to China. It was forbidden for Vietnamese. So, it, so but because we are French, there were no reason, and we had a valid visa. There were no reason we could not go. So we arrived at the border station, and it was completely empty. I, we are the only one. The officers there were so surprised. What are you doing here? We want to go to China. What? No, no, don't go to China. So they tried just to 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 push us out of the of the office, but we just say we want to go to China. And uh, after some negotiation, it was okay. We could leave Vietnam. And then we entered China without any problems at all. And when we arrived, we feel that we felt that we we made the good choice. But it's true that before that, during the two weeks we spent in Vietnam, it was a lot of stress because everybody was afraid for us. And then yeah. we were not uh, confident anymore. And we feel okay, maybe we have to change the plan. So I remember one time, one time we we just stopped in the cafe and we tried to to. To, to get information. To get all the information. Okay, if we change the, the trip and we go to India, Pakistan, uh, Myanmar, India, uh, what visa do we need to, to, to apply? People. Should I renew my passport because my passport was expired soon? Expired soon. So it was a lot of stress. And then because we figure out it, was, it will not be uh, easier, we just say, okay, no, just keep the plan and we will see. And we did it. And I think we... We feel that we make a good choice. I see that now you are doing good in China, but how was your trip in China in the very beginning, when you just arrived in the country? Yeah, we were still a bit afraid because we, because we heard so many things before that we didn't know where we will arrive, but it was not so complicated. Um, of course, some villages were, were still closed, so once we took a smaller road and just the people at the beginning of the village said, no, you cannot take this road because the village is closed for foreigners. So then we decided to just keep the main road, which was not so, with not a lot of traffic, so it was okay. And we had no problem. Um, maybe just funny stories. For example, one time we stopped in a noodles restaurant to have a noodle soup and the, the people inside told us, yeah, you, you eat in this table, and you, you eat in this table. Okay, we were alone in the restaurant, and we say, okay, you know, we are a couple. Uh, and they say, no, 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 but it's our, we, it, that, this is the rules. We have to follow the governmental rules. So, but this happens only once. 
so then um, the day after day it become more relaxed uh, we spend also uh, two weeks in our friend family so yeah it was it was quite relaxed but then yeah at the uh, end of march, march uh, yeah. basically the chinese government decided to close the border because they figure out that uh, more and more cases were coming from abroad so those uh, they were um, like foreigners coming back to china or entering china again we are bringing back the virus also Uh, mm -hmm. The Chinese who were coming back from Europe or United States were also uh, bringing back the virus. So they decided to close the borders. And there, at that point, the situation started to be uncomfortable because uh, the, the information spread, spread it was like uh, foreigners are bringing back the virus. So uh, with our white face, uh, we started to struggle a little bit. Yeah, when we cross... We crossed the villages in Sichuan. Uh, people were afraid when we stopped in the shop to buy just some food. Once even I, I the ladies di didn't let me enter in the shop because she said, no, 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 go away, go away. Um, and then each time we just stop on the, um, in the city to eat, we have a lot of people who came, like local authorities, police, to just ask many questions. Where do you come from? What do you do? Where do you go? And When did you enter China? China. Oh, the most which, question. <laughs> which airport? And it was really difficult for, for us to explain because um, communication issue. So it was each time we, it takes it took a very long time. And but they found a solution. And for one week in Sichuan, we were followed by a car with po people from local governments just to to secure us. I yeah, know. also to watch uh, for us all the time yeah. that we were not going to people's house. So or when I don't we know. we buy we bought some food, uh, for example, they were just in front, uh, b behind, and they said, "Yeah, no problem. They we we know them. It's okay. It's okay." So each time, then we didn't have any trouble anymore. Even the sometimes we sleep we sleep in the in the forest, and the car just stop be on uh, the road, just close to the the camping spot. And they just spent the, the night there. So it was really, we didn't really understand, but they do what they want. They did what they want. Just to ride and pass the village, just being in movement was no, some, mm. no problem. Like people do not stop us. But as soon as you stop somewhere for more than 10 minutes, then the problem starts. Like uh, we were stopping in the village, start to eat our meal. And then you can see around people are staring at us and then mobile phone out, starting to call someone. Then you can sm feel you can smell or oh, that doesn't smell good. And uh, many times we just rush to our bicycle, try to leave. But then the police arrive and then we were stuck for two or three hours uh, discussing with them. Always the same stupid questions. Uh, where are you from, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. So we were we were happy when we arrived in Xi'an. To, uh, to make a stop, a break in our uh, travel, to be secured. And, and even when we arrive in Xi'an, again, again, like they went crazy about where are you coming from? Where did you, why did you arrive here? And they just, uh, they wanted to send us two weeks in quarantine. That makes no sense, but they didn't know how to react. So again, we had to bargain and uh, we, we eventually find a solution. But yeah, that was March and April in China traveling. It was quite tough. Yeah, but regarding the global situation, we think it was quite okay because our family and friends in France, they were just locked in the house. Yeah. So, yeah, it was a bit difficult, but we did it and it was feasible. So, and was also nice experience. Interesting. <laughs> interesting experience. I would not say nice, but interesting. interesting. Yeah, that was really interesting. And tell us, what do you do in China? Where do you live there? So now we live in the Walden Farm. Jiangyou County, Mianyang City, Sichuan Province in China. Um, and so we arrived there one week ago. And yeah, we plan to be volunteer on this farm and in this village. And our uh, so our job will be to to make some uh, research and um, exchange about knowledge on agriculture in Europe and here uh, to help to develop this uh, very nice place. And uh, yeah, why we arrived here? Because uh, when we arrived in Xi'an, basically uh, the situation got... Uh, because when we arrived in China, we had only one month visa. But then, because there were so much uh, visa issues, the Chinese government decided to give for free and automatically 
60 more days for every foreigner so we could stay three months and we at that time we were thinking okay maybe the virus would be gone and uh, we have time to reach uh, Kazakhstan but then the situation basically got worse as, as we explained before so when we arrive in Xi'an it's like the end point or you go west to Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan or you go east to uh, Shanghai or Beijing or you go back south where, where we were coming from so when we arrived in Xi'an, we, we had to, to figure out what, what will we do because we were not confident that the situation could improve and that we, we could cross the border. Because when we arrived in that city, the border were still closed and there were no good signs that we that we reopen. So we just took the opportunity to to have a break in our journey. And that's why we decided to find a job, an activity to stay uh, more in China. So we explored a little bit the, the world of uh, English teaching in China, but uh, the, this, this world is really strange, weird, and a little bit disgusting. So we are quite happy that we found that farm. And uh, yeah, I think we will have a, a good time there. After two years of teaching in Vietnam, I was really interested about your opinion about teaching in China. Uh, so I'm happy that you found the farm. Are you going to stay there longer in China or you have a plan to come back home or you're going to explore other countries? What are your plans for the future? Yeah, we plan to stay here uh, three months, maybe six, maybe nine. And we hope that next spring we can continue the journey uh, to Central Asia. So we hope the border will be open and also that the country has a, a good situation that we can travel because maybe we, we don't know what will be after the virus crisis. So yeah, we will continue the road where, when we will be able to do it. Yeah, the goal is to go back home or at least Europe by bicycle. But yeah. now it's just not possible no, it's because of border issues. And because of, of course, we don't want to take any plane. <laughs> Crazy people. <laughs> I hope you will be able to continue your trip after the borders are open. And I'm sure that many people would like to follow such a crazy plan to travel and buy bike around the world or at least go into Asia. As experienced travelers, as experienced cyclists, which tips would you like to give to beginner travelers who are just planning such a trip? The first one. Yeah. Yeah, go for it, Matilda. I have to think. <laughs> Uh, don't have any deadline yes. because then you can really explore all your travel and be free to yeah to get any opportunity to follow the opportunities uh, yeah to be free to experience all of what happened during the the trip because you can never plan what will happen and also yeah also at that point because we met quite few people who experience that like have a six month trip and go like very far away from home have all this experience and then you arrive at the end of your journey and you know that in two or three days you have to go back at your office and uh, in your previous life and many of uh, these people say yeah, it was quite tough experience especially if you fly back by plane like you spend six months of your life to do a, a route then in one day you are back at your start point so that's quite Oppressed. <laughs> yeah, uh, oppressing. And um, it's also because if you travel without any deadlines, maybe you're more willing to catch uh, any good opportunities that just pass in front of you. So that's for us is maybe more comfortable. If you want to take time, you can take time. You don't have to rush. You can really enjoy your travel. For me, uh, don't see too big and do what you like and what you are confident with. Because, for example, if I, I knew it before that I will travel for three or four years and I will go to Asia by bicycle, maybe I will never have, uh, I will never start my trip because it will, I will be afraid of this. So for me, it was easier to just think, okay, go to Finland to visit my friend one year, two years in Europe, we will see. And then it's only because we like the travel and we got we catch these opportunities that we decided, yes, we can continue and go further. But at the beginning, we didn't know. And it's also because of this that we, we, we were able to, able to start it because we were not afraid of it. Yeah. And maybe last uh, advice. Uh, this is maybe related to our, one of our rules that have a small budget. 
Uh, yeah, it's just sometimes you see people who are going on the trip with very fancy, expensive, shh, very fancy and expensive. You don't like the word fancy and expensive, that's why. So very expensive and uh, fancy. I, okay, you know I told you those words, uh, stuff and materials and bicycle and everything. But I think I, I, I find it more interesting if you just go with simple thing. I mean, the bicycle is a simple thing. You can. You can have a big trip with a very simple bicycle. For example, our trailer, we bought it second hand for 30 euro. And this trailer already did a tour of France. And now after one and a half years, she's still there. It's just common steel. You can weld it very easily. The bike is a second hand bike frame. Uh, it's very strong. You can weld it also. Um, I think it's not really important to have the best material ever. It's really important that you have some skills. You learn like how to repair a bike, what you can fix alone, what is the problem. Like to, to not be so dependent on uh, on on very expensive and complicated stuff. Uh, because, for example, the the issues we we got with the gear hub in uh, is is quite tough. It was really complicated to find a solution. Yeah, it was also very nice to talk to all these people and uh, uh, at least get this solution. But uh, the most simple is your uh, material and uh, then it's then easier to repair it, right? So that's why I, I would say just take what is around you, don't uh, put so much money on it and uh, you will learn on the journey and uh, yeah, just keep it simple. Thanks for your advice, I really agree with you, it's important just to start and then you will learn on the way, it's true. And uh, one more question. Could you recommend any books or films for travelers? Uh, no, because I don't know how to read. And I don't like films. Okay, stop. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's fine. Okay, let's, let's tell them. Um, yeah, I remember before the trip, we met a very nice woman, Sylvie Sula. She, she wrote a book about traveling and she started the trip from the same city as us in Angoulême in France, and also with the tandem. So we read uh, her book, and then David f f found a contact, so we could meet, meet, her, meet her during a, uh, an event on uh, traveling by, by bicycle. And it was really, it really inspired us, and also it makes that we feel okay. Second book, uh, it's also French writers, but maybe more uh, renowned. The name is Alexandre Poussin and uh, Sylvain Tesson. So they, they are very good writers. And so Alexandre Poussin made a book called Africa Trek. And David also liked the books of Mike Horn, this <laughs> great explorer that make crazy things like just uh, cross all Amazon, Amazon River. Yeah. Amazon River from the beginning to the sea. So it's also someone who inspired us. Yeah. Merci beaucoup for your inspiring recommendations. I will add them in the description to this video so everybody can read them and find them. And thank you for your video. That was really nice talking to you guys. Hope you will enjoy staying in China and going travel around the world, maybe by your tandem. Hope to see you somewhere. Bye bye. Have a good day. Goodbye. Bye bye. Bye, Jen. <laughs> Au revoir. You can find the Instagram of David and Matilda in the description so that you can follow them if you like. Also, consider subscribing to our channel. We will have more interviews with so amazing and interesting people from around the world. Bye bye. Previously in the video, we gave you some tips, but there were more theoretical related to our lifestyle what we find nice while traveling uh, how we enjoy uh, our way of uh, traveling so now I will give you a tip that is very practical and can help you a lot traveling by bicycle or even in your normal life this tip is stop using toilet paper use water and soap why First, because toilet paper is useless, and second, because it's dirty, right? Because when you use a toilet paper, what are you doing basically? You just spread your shit all around your ass. And when you have a very hairy ass, like mine, for example, then you get a shit spread all over your hairs, and uh, that's very um, dirty, I think. 
Uh, and also, when you're traveling by bicycle, is just then the, 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 your underwear is compressed between your ass and your saddle. And because you're moving, it's make this movement, right? So then your dirty ass is just spreading the sheet on your underwear. And if you are a regular biker, you know it. Your underwear smells so bad. Yeah, don't lie. I know it. You know it too. So, a good solution to solve this problem is just stop using toilet paper. Also, make no sense when you're traveling by bicycle. What's the point to carry toilet paper? We had some friends who were traveling by bicycle and they were buying like special uh, toilet paper rolls pack, like six or eight, because it was cheaper to buy eight than uh, basically you cannot buy a single one. So the uh, the or or you go to restaurants and just uh, take some spare at the, on the toilet if they have, but uh, that's also useless. So uh, that's a very inexpensive uh, thing. So you just find a, a bottle of water. So me, I found this one in in Lao. It's very sad, but you can find plastic bottles everywhere in the nature. And because there is not only one bottle, then you can find also a spare cap. So in second cap. This second cap, you have to make some holes on it, so you use a needle or like a thin and pointing thing. So me, for to make this one, I use my dick, and uh, then you just have to replace. And here you go, you have a nice water sprinkler, right? So the method is very easy. You you go to the forest, do your thing, and then with the water, you just sprinkle gently the water to your ass, and at, at the same time with your left hand, just scrub it because to make it clean and remove all the solid uh, parts of your sheet, right? So you will scrub it with the, the water. Then you you will have shit on your hand, on your left hand, but that's normal. This this can be scary, like, oh my God, I have a shit on my hand, but that's normal, that's no problem. So you just clean your hand with the water, like remove all the the, the solid parts. Then you, you take some soap. So we have a little uh, box where we keep all the solid uh, rest of our soap because when it's so small like this it's not very convenient to wash your body with so then use the soap make some foam with your hands like foam it foam it and then clean your ass and that's a wonderful feeling because most of the people they don't know their ass never touch it because like oh it's dirty yes if you spread your shit with the toilet paper your ass is dirty but then using soap you can clean it it's a wonderful feeling you will discover your body like most of the people one of uh, in on the body one part is missing they don't know their ass so then let this cover your ass like wash it properly do a little massage oh it's very uh, it's very nice so then after that you, you just have to rinse uh, with the, still the bottle and then also rinse your hand then you can dry your hand you can dry your ass just with uh, the hand or use a little uh, towel like this or a little tissue and then just smell oh but your hands smells soap and soap smells good so you are very clean so that's a wonderful method using almost nothing to be clean and have a better travel better feeling right so you can also use this uh, bottle uh, to have a shower we also use it uh, like a regular shower I would say we use half a bottle to just water and wet yourself then uh, soap yourself and then rinse it's about two bottles like this so that's very convenient so that's very easy stop using toilet paper use water and soap your social life would be better you will feel better because a clean ass in a clean body in a clean mind you know this is Greek uh, uh, guy who told that and uh, also you would be successful uh, you will save some money uh, and uh, you can also share the tip with all the people you know and also apply this tip in your normal life so enjoy and don't forget not to leave paper water and so